great to see professional snooker back here in Scotland. It's been too Sixteen. long a wait, really, but it's been worth the wait. Yep. I think John's going in behind the pink here. Oh, he's under hit it. Now, did he get a con uh, bad contact there, or was that just a bad shot? Just wonder whether that white just seemed to stop. Have a look at this. Yes, that's bounced. He's got a kick, and it's taken the pace out of the white. Had Higgins been able to get tight to the pink, that could have been a missable snooker for Foo. 36 the difference, 35 there. You hear a pin drop out there right now. That's a good hit. It's not bad. I thought if he was going to just flick off the pink there, he could have left it over the corner. <coughs> so 36 the difference, 35 on the table. Well, this could become the longest frame of the match. At the moment, it's 26 minutes, 27 seconds. And we're up to just under 22 minutes. Great night to have a ticket. He's played one. I'm not sure whether Marco can swerve around the brown here. Might have to come off the side cushion. Well, if the pink wasn't there, yes, he'd be playing the swerve, but he could swerve into the pink. So he might have to come off the side cushion. It's one of those. He's got to get enough side to go around the brown, but not too much to hit the pink. Well, I think he's going to have to come off the side cushion. I can't really see any other way. Well, he's looking at the swerve. Oh, this is dangerous. This is really dangerous. Oh, what a shot this is. What a shot. Oh. I can't tell you how good that is to put enough side on to get around the brown and make no contact with the pink. Brilliant. Could have easily underswerved that, could have overswerved it. Fascinating opening frame uh, for this evening session, Phil. Yes, one snooker is never enough, is it, when you're playing John Higgins and Marco Fu having to work very hard here to hold on to his advantage in this frame. Looking to win his fourth on the bounce. He's never been in front in this final. Very nearly got a snooker back. I just wonder whether John might play the pot here, get onto the pink, then try and lay the snooker from the yellow. Nope. He's going to wait. The only reason I said that is because there's a lot of colours down that end of the table to, to be able to lay snookers. I was hoping just to slip past the yellow there, but not to be.
Well, from Marco's point of view, the pink is in a better position now for him. Let's just remind everybody, John still needs one snooker. Nearly, not quite. That's normal, you'd be probably pushing this towards a corner packet, uh, pocket or something, but you cannot afford to do that. The red and the pink, and one snooker would be enough. This is now the longest frame of the match. Just gone past 27 minutes. Yeah, so the last thing you wanted to do there was move the black. Now, oh, where's this going to finish? Behind the brown. Oh. Could have done with it being tight behind the ground though. Still a great snooker from there. Well it could be one cushion, top cushion with side. Yes, he's just playing left of the black here with the left hand side. He's thinking about it. The other option is two cushions. Tell you what, Phil, John Higgins so good at this, isn't he? <laughs> Winning frames like this with nowhere. He's putting Marco through the ringer. Flew so close to his fourth straight frame, but he's not there yet. It would be a horrible one to lose. Just <laughs> caught the paintwork. <laughs> oh, he's got one back. He's got the old Brucey bonus. And it's a rueful smile from John Higgins there. Sue only just connecting with the red, but it's a very good result. Just keep an eye on the red here. Didn't move much. But it was enough. Now it's John's problem. Yes, good hit. Oh, he's got the double kiss. This frame could be over. The treble kiss, in fact. Well, if Fu sinks the red, the frame is over for sure. But no. 
So on we go. This frame now 31 minutes old. Higgins still needs one snooker. not too bad for John actually because the colours are gathering in to that corner and they're in good position for a snooker. Marco has to be very careful. As you just mentioned Phil, this would be a hard one to swallow. Just for a second there, I thought the white was going to go into the middle pocket. Well, this one chose him to take the pot on and leave himself on the black, but well, to get anywhere near the yellow, he's going to have to play a shot here, but he, he must make sure of the black. And then he's going to do is going to probably put the white in there to this side cushion and play the snooker behind the blue or the brown for the yellow. Well, he's trying to get a little bit closer. <coughs> Quite sure how he's going to play this unless he plays a cannon into the blue and kills the white. He just wanted a slightly thicker contact on the blue, and that would have been four ball. As it is, Marco can get to this yellow off the top cushion. Just a touch of side on the cue ball. Oh, I thought he'd gone around it. Yeah, a touch more side than he intended for sure, but once again. He makes contact, that's all that matters. Not easy to lay a snooker from here. Just got to be careful it doesn't leave the yellow one either. I'll tell you what, what about this? What about this? Unbelievable. <laughs> what do you say, Phil? <laughs> Quite difficult to lay a snooker from there. Well, it was. But you wouldn't think so. Look at Higgins' shot. Another wonderful tactical shot from Higgins. Trying his heart out for this snooker. Well, not 
difficult to hit, but I was about to say there's a possibility he could go off here. Well, John might pop the yellow and then try and lay the snooker from the green. He could get him behind, well, pink or brown. Yeah, Two. he might play that. Now, which way will he go? Will he hold behind the pink or come across the left-hand side? I think probably pink is favourite. He's trying like a bear here. <coughs> the equation remains the same. 26 the difference, 25 on, one snooker required for John Higgins. Yeah, of course, he'll be looking to keep these colours on, or as many as possible. Hang on, hang on. Oh, I thought he's gone through the gap there enough. But uh, actually, he pushed the blue into a better position now. Yes, there's no way John wants to be potting the colours, of course, because it's taking uh, all the time, it's taking his odds down of laying the snookers, or the snooker that he needs. It's nearly 25 minutes since Marco Fu potted what was theoretically frame ball. But we're still here. Well, that's not clever because he's left the green on, obviously, and John might pot this and try and lay the snooker behind the blue on the brown. He's looking at that, just to stun off the side cushion, and if he could play that and get right in behind the blue, Marco's in trouble. He could still lose his frame. He had to make sure he got that green safe. Three. Needs a bounce, needs a bounce. Well, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Stun off the side cushion in behind the blue. Oh, John, John, he's played it poorly. Oh, sorry, my colleagues. He's got the snooker. I thought he was playing the brown at the table and got the white right tied to the blue, but he has the snooker. Clever. Higgins, well aware of the psychological damage this frame could do to Marco Fu were he to lose it from a snooker's required situation. Well, it looks like Marco's going to have to go up the table somewhere. Well, not only is this about the angle, uh, Phil, it's about the pace as well, isn't it? Because he could leave a free ball. And, of course, if he leaves at that end, then John can play another snooker behind the pink. Apart from that, fairly straightforward. It's a sticky situation, for sure. Well, I think this is twice up and down. Long way, he's trying to hit the, uh, hit the brown. He's caught the pink, has he? Oh, what a hit. What a hit, that is. He's got a quarter ball sticking out there. Unbelievable. Well, he's actually hit that about half ball, but still a great escape. <laughs> Nearly. But John's pushed the blue safe. I mean, the black now will come into play for the snooker. He didn't want to do that. Higgins would have had high hopes when he laid the snooker behind the blue. But that could be the pivotal moment in this frame. Who remains the favourite to take it? Higgins still looking for that elusive snooker.
frame has now been in progress for over 41 minutes. And most of that time, we've been playing for snookers. Clever shot. Wow, I'm going to say John's a million now with the, uh, where the blue and the black are. Well, he was attempting to nudge the black. I didn't do so. Marco's got to be careful here. He wants to hit this brown thin enough not to move the black, but then the white's flying around the table. Yeah, well done. That's clever as well. Unlucky not to find the white in behind the pink. But he's put the black into a, a better position. A chance to cut this brown in, but will he play it? I think it's risky. Just wait. always going towards that corner that's why he needed to get the snooker he has done but again easy to hit two cushions <coughs> hang on as he potted it this frame has lasted longer than the first three of the final put together when Higgins was making three centuries on the bounce but it's no less significant more so in fact if Higgins could somehow get the snooker and win the frame it would be a hammer blow to his opponent so far that snooker has proved elusive got a chance here just a reminder as we see Fu look to sink the brown that should win him the frame but the Masters gets underway in the new year Four. just under a month away Tony O'Sullivan of course defending his title going for a record seventh Masters crown and Alexandra Palace here a sport will be there 
Marco Fu, four, and, and the John Higgins remains in his chair. Well, he couldn't have battled more valiantly, could he, for the snooker he needed, but it proved elusive, and that means it is four straight frames for Marco Fu, which is remarkable.